As a nurse, you want to be familiar with different types of rhythms. And in this review, I'm going to be going over atrial flutter. Atrial flutter, also referred to as A flutter, occurs because there is an abnormal electrical signal causing the atria to contract very rapidly. Now, atrial flutter is similar to atrial fibrillation that we talked about in the previous review, but there are some differences that you want to be familiar with. So what are some characteristics and criteria to tell you that you're dealing with a flutter? Well, whenever you look at that ECG waveform, you're going to see that there are no P waves, but flutter waves that look like a sawtooth. And the atria are firing very rapidly, typically around a rate of 300 beats per minute, give or take, and its presentation will be regular. Now, it's important to note that these waves that you see in front of the QRS complex are not P waves, but abnormal P waves that we term flutter waves, and they have this sawtooth appearance. Now, this sawtooth appearance is one of the key points in helping you discern atrial flutter from atrial fibrillation. Now, when you look at the QRS complex, it should measure less than 0.12 two seconds and our QRS complex tells us about the ventricular rate which can vary it can be regular or irregular but we don't want it to be too fast or too slow because this will affect how the heart can pump out blood hence our cardiac output and in this rhythm you cannot measure the PR interval or the QT interval or assess the T waves now what can cause atrial flutter well anything that really affects the heart especially a heart valve problem where we have the tricuspid and the mitral valve in involved or if the patient's had a myocardial infarction, a heart attack, it can cause this rhythm, or if they've underwent heart surgery. Plus, if they have an overactive thyroid, it could lead to atrial flutter. Now, how do we treat atrial flutter? Well, we really wanna control that heart rate, and we can do that by administering medications. And some medications include calcium channel blockers, such as deltiazem, also known as cardiazem, or administering beta blockers, one type is like propranolol, or digoxin, especially if the patient has heart failure because it'll help that heart pump more efficiently where it's weak from the heart failure. And we can give antiarrhythmic drugs like amiodarone. And one thing we really want to do with this rhythm is we want to prevent a blood clot from forming because those atria are not contracting as they should and blood can pull there. And whenever we have blood pull in the heart, it could lead to a blood clot. So the patient may be on some anticoagulants such as warfarin or also known as Coumadin to help prevent this. Now, if this rhythm is persistent and the patient starts to develop symptoms where they become unstable, we can do a synchronized cardioversion. And this is where a shock is synchronized to the patient's R wave. So we will hopefully convert them back into normal sinus rhythm. And then finally, some patients need a procedure called an ablation. And this is a procedure that ablates, and that word means destroys or erodes, some of the tissue in the heart to prevent it from firing abnormally. Okay, so that wraps up this video over atrial flow. And if you'd like to watch more ECG videos, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.